Today we're going to look at the Student Growth Item Bank, which is um, a product line that Progress Testing is coming out with in January of 2014. But it's been, a, it's been a long journey to get to this point because collaborating across districts and states is a very difficult thing to do when we're talking about item banks. You might have heard in other sessions uh, and experienced this in your own districts and companies that uh, even within your district, what's taught in one course uh, in one section may not be exactly what's taught in another course in another section. So why does that cause problems for us? Well, in the context of teacher effectiveness ratings, it's very difficult to standardize the curriculum. On top of that, the costs associated with doing uh, teacher evaluation testing, student growth testing to establish numbers that can feed into the teacher evaluation or just teacher effectiveness ratings in general, there's a huge cost associated with this. So if every single section of each course has to write their own items and make their own tests, we're talking about um, billions and billions of dollars being spent on this. So there has to be a better way to do this. And so what we're proposing is the Student Growth Network, which is combined with the Student Growth Item Bank. Editorial services is a backbone for anyone who is part of the network. And metadata and item statistics expansion via data exchange. I know you all can read. Assessment platform provider relationships and then the item logic tool. So why this configuration for a product line? And the reason for it is what we've established with the Student Growth Item Bank is that, uh, again, I can be teaching intro to art in my district. You might call it art appreciation in your district. Across the state line, they might call it uh, art one. So we call it three different things, but we're all teaching the same thing or at least some subset of the same thing, maybe 70, 80%. So when, what's the additional 20%? Well, those are gonna be new items that need to be written, but how many school districts are set up to do uh, editing and graphics work and to become their own publishing houses? Well, you can't necessarily do that. You have your own challenges with hiring, with budgets, et cetera. So we provide the editorial services for any licensee of the um, Student Growth Item Bank. And then when we do that, um, we are allowing folks to modify our items. And so in exchange, we want your modifications back to us. And then we can communicate the additional metadata that comes in. Let's say it's local standards, uh, state standards, uh, uh, DOK levels, um, some p-values from an actual test deployment, whatever it is that comes in and continues to feed the bank. The assessment platform provider relationships will go into place so that you don't have to work with a new platform because nobody wants to, no, no one has the, the time or the money to do the professional development necessary to train everyone on a new platform. So whatever your platform is, that's where the student growth item bank can go in. There'll be a, some challenges for the assessment platform providers, but not many. And then when you are engaging in large scale item writing across your district, here in Florida, of course, we have to do this because we need the buy-in of our teacher unions, our, our um, staff across the district. When we do large-scale item writing, because the student growth item bank, again, may only cover 70 or 80 percent of your needs, but you're still going to need to add some items to that. What kind of tools do we have for working with that? And I know some of you are familiar with uh, some of the tools that are out there right now, but I think you'll be very interested to see uh, the item logic piece. So, the Student Growth Item Bank was originally developed by Hillsborough County Public Schools. As you know, Hillsborough County has e end of course testing in place since the late 1980s. They received a Gates grant under the Empowering Effective Teachers uh, program and realized that they were going to have to expand their EOC work to cover all of their courses, 
Okay? So they did that so that they could participate in the Empowering Effective Teachers program. We licensed those items from Hillsborough County, and then, of course, we had to uh, clean those items up, redo the graphics, et cetera. Then we added our own items from our item pool. Many of you have used our item banks, the FCAT Test Maker item bank over the years. And from that pool of items, we, we pulled over the highly rigorous items. So what do you use the Student Growth Bank for? Well, student achievement testing and student growth testing. Basically, most of your assessment needs can be satisfied by starting in the student growth item bank. The underlying backbone to the item bank is the school codes for the exchange of data. Here internal to Florida, you, Hillsborough County's course codes are gonna be meaningful to you. You probably are using similar codes. However, here in Florida, the way that we created, uh, the way that course codes are created is a school district says, oh gosh, I wanna teach a course. So they go to their school board, their school board says, great. Um, they approve it, then you submit to the Department of Articulation up at the um, Florida Department of Education, and they give you a course number. So we have over 5,000 course numbers in the state of Florida. So as you can imagine, a lot of courses are very, very, very similar. So how does a course in Hillsborough relate to a course in Miami-Dade? And how does a course in Florida relate to a course in Georgia and Ohio? And the way that we make um, sense of that and answer those questions is through SCED codes. SCED codes were developed by NCES. Uh, it's a national taxonomy for saying, one level up from the course, all right, here's what we're teaching. And um, we believe all of these courses map to this particular code. So whether you call it art or intro to art or art one or beginning art or whatever, it all maps this one SCED code. So the SCEDs make the exchange of items possible across district lines and across state lines. For example, Here's the perfect problem. In Orange County, they offer a co course called Drawing Honors. Here's the course code, 0104360. In Miami-Dade, they offer Drawing 1 and Drawing 2, and their course codes, you might notice, are a little different than uh, Orange County's. In Atlanta Public Schools in Georgia, here's all of the courses that they offer for drawing and then drawing and painting. So we've got drawing common, but we have very different codes and we have different names across all of these districts. So how do, how do we fix that? So we go and look at the SCED codes. And everything from the Orange County, the Dade, and the Atlanta courses, they map to these SCED codes. And so when you read the descriptions of the SCED codes, you go, okay, that makes sense to me. So when you're working in the bank, you're not going to look just for a course code. You're also going to want to search for SCED codes because you will get greater use of the item bank. You'll get more relevant items um, it, when you use the SCED. So by, you, by applying the SCED code here, Georgia and Florida can make use of all of the items that are in the bank that refer to drawing or painting for that matter. And when you do look it up by SCED code, and mind you, there'll be a provision for a lookup, um, here's a question from the item bank. So which of the following is achieved by using strong contrast? So any of you ever taken drawing? Well, me neither, I guessed, and said it was depth. <laughs> okay. But the odds are pretty good that a teacher coming into the bank who teaches drawing or painting or any of those other courses that we just identified from all those disparate groups, okay, is going to go, oh, okay, yes, well, of course I taught, uh, you know, the use of contrast in drawing, so I want to use that item, all right? And so that's the power of the SCED code. Is there other metadata? Yes. Um, you know, can, in Florida, will you be able to look up by uh, course number? Yes, you will. 
But as I said, the problem with the Florida course catalog is, and I know Eric knows this, is that there's so many related courses that um, to say that there's a direct relationship one-to-one -one between courses and I'm only narrowly going to focus on item banks that just refer to this course it is not going to be helpful. It's not going to be productive ultimately. So through the use of SCEDs, we're able to cross district lines and we're able to cross state lines. The Student Growth Bank will help with the test development for courses. It's not going to cover in everything. I don't think anybody could actually cover everything, at least to start with. Uh, but it does allow for the, um, for the participation of teachers and for their own subjective selection of items. Now, when we get through this whole process of an item bank, and we've selected items, let's say, and we've done that in an assessment platform. What happens now? Now we do a gap analysis and we say, OK, well, we've got, we've got this many items. And that was really great. We found 20, 30 items. But we're making a 50-question test. So um, if in Florida we're fortunate enough to have item banks coming to us for, from a couple of uh, sources, the state interim bank, the district develop hard to measure banks, the CFAC bank for um, certain courses as well. So we've got some of those so we can go there and look for items. But when it's all said and done and you've got your gap, now what are you going to do? So at this point you need an item writing tool. And a collaborative tool so that your teachers feel that they have uh, a part of the process, content specialists and their knowledge is captured, you have an easy to use tool so that everybody can edit, write, edit, review, and the whole system can be supported by this tool. We identified Item Logic, Kevin Campbell. We believe he has a best of breed tool that was developed in conjunction with the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, uh, some content writing projects. He's also used it with the state of Connecticut's Department of Education for a large-scale ballroom item writing effort. And he's been developing this for the past two years in conjunction with some of these Smarter Balanced projects. And of course, Connecticut is a part of Smarter Balanced. And we are working with him to modify item logic to fit the needs of K-12 districts. The difference there is when a publisher is using it to write items for a specific project versus supporting everything that we need in a collaborative, uh, leveled approach to writing, acquiring items, and then getting them approved and through that process. Item Logic can support that, and it's growing all the time in its needs. So just to summarize, Student Growth Bank gets you so far. Interim uh, Bank, hard to measure, CFAX, it all gets you so far. But no matter how far down the road you get, you're still probably going to have to engage in item writing.